Thank you very much. Welcome to each and every one of you as we gather on this beautiful <coughs> winter Sunday morning, which is the sixth Sunday after the festival of Epiphany. We're all cordially invited for lunch after our service today, provided by the church, and so we'll uh, be having our table grace here in church before we go over, and I'll try to remind us of this again, but when you go directly over for lunch, by just pick up your dessert, your beverage, and your sandwich, and go to your, take a place, and then we will be served our soup or chili uh, as we sit down. We shall avoid our spilling it, which I have a, we may have a tendency to do, so that uh, I'll try to remind us of that again, but now we are aware of that. Also, <clears throat> our announcements are that we continue to support for the months of January and February our special mission project of CHOW, which is a nutrition program in the Oakville School District. And our food pantry is supported during the month of February. Of course, we can bring gifts of canned goods and the, uh, all year round, but February is an emphasis on that from Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, if you wish to bring food and just bring it over here, we'll have a blessing of the food, but also if you wish to give a check, you can make it out to Zion, uh, Zion Church and just make a note on it or with, with a note that it is for the food pantry and uh, that uh, the financial gifts are matched uh, 20, uh, for 20 cents we get a dollar's worth of food from the St. Louis food pantries. So are there any other announcements for us before we begin with worship? We're just happy to have, I see our guests sitting in the front row, Pat and Cole Carver and my sister Jerry and brother-in-law Steve, plus other guests that are with us. And uh, so here we are. Let us then stand as we are able as we join in singing our opening two songs. <clears throat>
I invite us to join in the opening prayer. O God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. Merciful God, you have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. Beloved of God, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God. Pour out for us the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. We are God's children. Our sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for ours is the reign of heaven. Amen. <clears throat> Christ in common, and brothers and sisters in the one family of God, I invite us to express and extend to one another a sign of peace. It is an honor once again to install the members of our church council and officers of our congregation and uh, you know who you are but i'm going to name you and you just come forward as your name is as called or just come as you desire to and that would be dewey grenard president ricky moeller vice president steve mcclay secretary Lori grenard financial secretary mary lou katowski treasurer and jim lady Elder. <clears throat> These persons have been elected by our congregation to positions of leadership within the church of Zion, United Church of Christ, and also the Church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, around the world. You have come forward at this time to accept the office to which you have been elected. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nurtured in faith. I ask you, together with all who are gathered here, to confess the faith of the Church of Jesus Christ, the faith in which we are baptized. Do you, as elected members of leadership and also as members and friends of Zion Church, affirm the faith that we have been given in the words of the Apostles' Creed, that God is our Father, Jesus Christ, his only Son, is our Savior, 
and the Holy Spirit is the con continuing of the communion of saints. If so, let us together affirm, say, we do. We do. St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them all. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform services led by the same God. He agrees that we agree with everyone to the fullest of our ability to serve that God who gives to us the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been elected to these positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You are to work together with each other and with members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and beyond, that God's will is done to the community in which we find ourselves and to the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific areas of serving that the one Lord who empowers us all be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love to help maintain the life and the harmony of this congregation. Is it your desire that you will fulfill these promises to the best of your ability? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Yes. And people gathered here in worship, people of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, let us together affirm by saying, yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. I now declare that you're installed to the offices to which you have been elected by the members of this congregation. May God bless you and his Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful witnesses to the love that God gives us in his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ, I extend to each and every one of you the right hand of Christian fellowship. Before I ask you to return to your seats, I want to thank Rhonda Grenert for her service on our church council and in the elected leadership of Zion Church. Thank you very much, Rhonda, for being a part of it. And let's give her a hand. <laughs> you may return to your seats. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it is always a joy to install members of our church council and leadership, and it was a joy today to share with each and every one of them, and Ricky Moeller is the newest member of our elected leadership team. Thank you, Ricky, for assuming that position of, in our congregation. <clears throat> as, as people of God gathered here in worship, we do so knowing that we are humbled under the throne of grace. We approach that throne of grace now in prayer. Let us pray. We trust you, O God, that you hear us as we pray for your church and for your world. Shepherding God, you protect and guide us with your word. Lead your church into ever closer relationship with you that we might better know your commands, hold fast to your decrees, and live in your law. God of peace, you show solidarity with all who suffer. Bring an end to violence, war, discrimination, and all other forms of deadly hate, that we may experience your love through the power of justice. God of growth, you nurture this community, cultivate in us a spirit of service to one another, and bless us in the ministry we share throughout this world. We especially give you thanks for the ministries of the Food Pantry in Irvington, and also of the nutrition program Chow, in the Oakville School District. We pray this day for those who are hospitalized, those who are in centers of assisted living, those who are homebound. We pray, O oh God, for those who are hospitalized. 
O God of our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah, and Rachel, we give you thanks for those who have gone before us in the faith, who now rest in your eternal grace and joy. Especially do we give you thanks for those from our own parish who have gone forth from here to live eternally with you and for their leadership and for their courage and for their faithfulness. We now come before you in silence as we pray for ourselves and for those who cannot pray for themselves. Confident that you are able to accomplish more than we even dare to ask, we bring these prayers before you, believing in your saving grace revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We acknowledge that all that we have and all that we are are good gifts from a loving Heavenly Father. In obedience to God's holy laws found in Scripture and with joy in our hearts, we return a portion of what God has given to us in these our tithes and offerings, remembering especially our special mission projects at this time of Chow, the nutrition program of the Yokobo School District, and also of our Washington County Food Pantry in Irvington. Let us now receive the gifts of God from the people of God. We dedicate unto you, O God, these gifts of money which you placed upon your altar. We also dedicate the work of our hands, the thoughts of our minds, that they might too be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our Redeemer and you are our Savior, our rock upon whom we trust. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. This time Owen will share with us from God's holy word.
The first lesson is from Deuteronomy. See, I have set before you life, today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but you led, are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of your days, that, so that you may live in the land and the Lord, that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The psalm today is Psalm 119. The refrain is, Blessed are those who walk in God's own blameless way. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who walk in God's own blameless ways. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. Blessed are those who walk in God's own blameless ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently, O oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. Blessed are those who walk up my own blameless way. I will praise you with an upright heart. When I learn your, your righteousness, righteous ordinances, I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. I invite all who are able to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel from St. Matthew. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or a sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or a sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gifts there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard it that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in her, her, with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it that it was said of those ancient times, to those, ancient, those of ancient times, you shall not fear false, swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is for his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one white hair, hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The word of the Lord.
You may be seated. Our gospel lesson today continues our reading from Matthew's gospel, which is the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7 contain this collection of sermons and sayings by Jesus, and we know them as the Sermon on the Mount. It is part of a larger teaching about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has just begun his public ministry, and he's gathered about him his first disciples. We look at the end of the fourth chapter in Matthew's Gospel before we begin the Sermon on the Mount, and it says that Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the peoples. Large crowds began to gather and to follow Jesus because of his extraordinary ministry of teaching, proclaiming good news and healing. He sits down to teach. In order to understand these Bible passages, it is important for us to see their context of what went on before them. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we kind of jump in. It's like when we are walk into an ongoing conversation in the middle and we don't know what has gone on before. Well, we can't understand certain passages unless we understand their context. The first part of the conversation is important to understand and be a part of the actual conversation. We don't want to base our understanding of scripture on one proof text verse. When I was in seminary, they warned us about proof texting because normally we select a, a verse or two of scripture to prove my point, to prove my point, not to look at the gospel in its entirety. We like to prove what I believe and to affirm what I believe. Throughout history, there's been some evil done with all of that, you know, even sometimes in our own time, by people who take the gospel, the words, out of context. Taking a Bible verse out of context doesn't lead to true understanding and an openness for the Spirit of God to dwell in our lives and in our very heart. It's important to understand that this Bible passage is part of a conversation that Jesus is carrying on in this sermon. He begins his ministry about teachings of the kingdom of heaven. He teaches that we do not earn our way into the kingdom by righteous acts. We don't earn our way. Instead, it even trips us up by saying, just in the last Sunday, when we heard the Beatitudes in the last two weeks, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who are persecuted for God's Christ's sake, for they're blessed in God's kingdom. He tells us that we are blessed not because of who we are in terms of our own self, but we are important because of what God has gifted us with in the Holy Spirit. Our importance comes from the wondrous grace and gift of God, the Holy Spirit and the saving grace in Jesus Christ, the anointed. And then he continues by laying out some pretty tough statements here. For he says, in, for I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, how is it possible to surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees? The Pharisees followed the law to every dot and cross T. They were perfectionists in the law. And yet, unless my righteousness, your righteousness, exceeds that of the Pharisees, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. How does our righteousness exceed that? It exceeds that because we're open to allowing 
and inviting the Holy Spirit into our hearts. What begins this scripture, this life of Christ, the beginning is acknowledging the gift that God gives us in grace and love. That is the beginning. Where is the ending? Well, the ending of Jesus' ministry is not his death on a cross. That's but a passage to Easter joy of resurrection. There is, in Christianity, a beginning, an ending, and then comes the good news. We have a title for the sermon today of Alpha and Omega. Now, some of us know what Alpha and Omega are all about. They are the beginning letters and ending letters of the Greek alphabet. And I was told in St. John Church in Johannesburg, there are 21 letters between Alpha and Omega. This fellow was pretty bright, wasn't he, to remind me that I'd forgotten, I'd totally forgot that there were 23 letters in the Greek alphabet. So the first one is the Alpha, the, se the last one is the Omega. God is our beginning and God is our ending. And if you look up to your right, you see every single Sunday an Alpha and Omega on that cross that is over the door of our sacristy. And there is a cross that's called the Jerusalem Cross because it has four equal cross arms which represent the four directions of the earth, east, west, north, and south. And it is called the Jerusalem Cross because Jerusalem is in the center of our universe. And you see superimposed upon there, and there is an alpha, and intertwined in there, there is the omega. The omega, the alpha. The beginning alpha, the ending omega. We see that because God's word and our lives are begun and ended in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is a great gift to us. Jesus now has the attention of everyone when he lays out the fact that our righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees. And then he goes on to, I suppose, really sharpen our attention. And he says, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. Anger like, is like murder. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Jesus is saying that it is a sin to even harbor an angry thought. He adds that if you even look at a woman and have lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery with her. What hope is there for me or for you? Not much. Not much in our own selves, in fact, nothing. It's like a mother who was helping her son with his spelling assignment. They came to two words that are very similar. The words are conscious and conscience. She asks her son, do you know the difference between these two words, conscious and conscience? He said, sure, Mom. Conscious is when you are aware of something, and conscience is when you wish you weren't. <laughs> well, good definition there. Now, sometimes we confuse our consciences and our conscience. But sure, Mom, conscious is when you are aware of something, and conscience is when you wish you weren't. Everyone listening to Jesus and his sermon realized they were guilty in the sight of God 
even though they had never murdered, stolen, or committed adultery. But Jesus says sin goes deeper than the overt actions we take. It involves our inner attitudes and lives. Sin doesn't start with action. Sin starts with a decision, not that our lives are God's life, but sometimes we decide that our lives are our own. God has no business interfering with our lives. If we think sin begins and ends with our outward actions, we're fooling ourselves. No one wakes up one day and just suddenly decides to commit murder, or today I'm going to lust after another woman besides my wife. Those acts start with some background stuff, namely contempt, hatred, envy, anger, resentment, and our pride. They build up in us. They thrive in a heart that does not have space for the spirit. These acts of adultery violates the sacred nature of the marriage vows. More importantly, it violates the clear teachings of Scripture. The only way to deal with the sins of the flesh is to fill ourselves with the presence of the Spirit in our lives. The power of sin, the power to hate, the power of anger, the power of lust, the power of pride and greed, Selfishness are deadly. They are toxic gas that builds up inside us and suddenly explodes in overt actions. We have to examine what's in our heart. The line between our thoughts and our actions is a very thin line. We are ruled by the Spirit of God, not by our own spirit. Sin does not start where we think it often does. Jesus says sin doesn't end where we think it ends. In these verses today we have, so when you are stuck, when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on the way to court. Interesting, <laughs> that's like a last minute, isn't it? You're already on your way to court. Or it says, or your an accuser may hand you over to the judge, the judge will hand you over to the guard, and the guard will hand you over to the jailkeeper, and into prison you go. Deal with sin by humbling yourself confessing, repenting, reaching out, and being reconciled. That's the beginning and the ending of sin. Acknowledge it, confess it, repent, reach out, and be reconciled. It's sometimes difficult to be reconciled. Sometimes it's difficult to live in a family share with you a rather simple, not terribly deep story about family life. A man by the name of the Reverend Nathan D. Baxter, who is the present dean of the Washington National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., tells of growing up in a family of strong-willed brothers. This story reminded me of that family that I am somewhat familiar with, the Gronkowski family, one of their sons, the five brothers, the Gronkowski brothers, Gordy lived with me for two summers. And if you want to live in a strong-willed family, I suppose you can live with a family of four brothers who became NFL football players, and the other became a professional baseball player. And if you want to see some sorts of, I suppose, egos involved there, you might go into that kind of a family. Well, as you can imagine, the brothers, Gronkowski's, but also Baxter's, usually got into all sorts of arguments and fights. 
Usually the arguments would blow over, but sometimes Nathan's mother had to get involved, and she always had the same formula for ending any kind of fight or argument. You boys go back and resolve it, she would say. And remember, you are brothers. It didn't matter what they were fighting about. It didn't matter who was at fault. Her command was always the same. You boys go back and resolve it. And remember, you are brothers. A very similar statement was made by Gordon Gronkowski Sr. in my garage when, he, when someone asked me about raising these five boys in their home. And he said something very similar. He said when they, when they had an argument, as you can imagine, or something of a disagreement, he said, my, he said their parents, my wife and I, always told them to resolve it yourselves. Remember, you are brothers. And he said, we did not do timeouts. Timeouts are a cop-out. They just delay the inevitable reality of what it's all about. I remember him saying that, that timeouts are cop-outs because they don't resolve. Right here, Reverend Nathan Baxter said, his mother said, you boys go back and resolve it. Remember you are brothers. That's for us too. Resolve our issues, remembering that we are brothers and sisters in the family of God. God is within our souls, in our lives. We need to be so full of God's spirit that our sin has no space or place, no room for anger, no room for lust, no room for greed. The Christian author, whom I appreciate and like very much, Max Lucado, or Lucado, experienced some heart problems a few years ago. His doctor recommended what is known as a catheter ablation procedure. As he was being wheeled into the surgery prep room, Lucado began joking around, probably nervously, with the surgeon. And he said, you're burning the interior of my heart, right? Correct, said the doctor. Lucado went on and said, you intend to kill the misbehaving cells. Yes, Lucado continued. That's my plan, the surgeon nodded. As long as you're in there, could you take your little blowtorch to some of my greed, selfishness, superiority, and guilt? Do away with it? Right. But the surgeon smiled and said, sorry, that's above my pay grade. That's way above the pay grade to get rid of our greed, selfishness, superiority, and guilt. We are those kinds of people. Not always, fortunately, but at times we are. But our purification of our hearts and cleansing them is above our pay grade, too. It's above all human pay grades. It is actually in the stratosphere or the down-to-earth person we call God. It is God's pay grade to resolve those issues in our hearts and lives. When we begin to think with the mind of God, respond with the heart of Christ, act with the power of the Holy Spirit, then we will know that God is our Alpha and our Omega. God is our beginning and God is our ending. God is all in all to each and every one of us. Let us go forth knowing that we have a God who loves us so much that he saved us by grace through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Going forth from here, we can be empowered to be the child God created us to be. For God is our beginning and God is our ending. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I invite all who are able to stand as we affirm our faith today using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found in the second from the last page in our songbooks. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Reminded that all of us are invited very cordially and warmly to our all church lunch in the parish hall immediately following our service. And as you enter, I pick up your beverage and your sandwich and your dessert, and then the chili or the soup will be and or the soup will be served. And that prevents me from spilling it on myself. Okay, <laughs> I hope. Okay, let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. Depart in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>